stories, our community. This is Local 5 News with Paul Evenson and meteorologist Chad Rafelisberger. A good Sunday morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's straight up 6 o'clock now. I'm Paul Evenson. Chad Rafelisberger joins us on this Father's Day. So we want to make sure right off the top to wish all you fathers out there a uh, very enjoyable day. And hopefully it's a little calmer day. Chad, than we saw yesterday yeah, in the weather department. Uh, especially yesterday evening, things got a little interesting with some funnel clouds. Uh, mm -hmm. At least one reported uh, tornado, as well as several uh, water spouts over Lake Winnebago. So a lot going on yesterday. Not the nicest of ways we want to start this Father's Day uh, weekend, but today is now looking much nicer. So some good news there if you have any outdoor plans on this Father's Day. Temperature-wise, it's quite muggy to start the day already. Temperatures well into the 60s, a few 50s on the board in Watoma as well as in Anago. Now still looking at a little cloud cover for eastern areas. Some patchy fog further to the north and west as well. But as we head over the next few hours, we will see that sunshine return. A very nice afternoon with highs for many of us, away from the water into the lower 80s, and look at all that sunshine here for the second half of the day as well. We'll be watching out for our next rain chance that arrives not only tonight, but then even a better rain chance for your Monday. More on that coming up in just a few minutes, Paul. All right. Thank you, Chad. Well, new this morning, CBS News is reporting that at least 12 people have reportedly been shot in Minneapolis overnight. The shooting was first reported at around 12.37 a.m. in the 2900 block of Hennepin Avenue. One man described as an adult has died from his injuries. The other 11 people, also described as adults, have been transported to area hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries. Now, at this time, there are no suspects in custody. When we do get more information, we will bring it to you. Transitioning now to Green Bay, where Green Bay police are still investigating a shooting that took place on Friday night. Police tell Local 5 that the survivors, one male is in stable condition and one female is in critical condition. Several cars were seen fleeing the area. Officers say there could be up to three shooters and that the people involved in the shooting knew each other. Local 5's Rhonda Fox has reaction from residents in the Seymour Park area who say they're getting frustrated with the recent incidents of gun violence. Oh, God. All I was doing is looking where Theodore was and make sure everybody was down and nothing was hitting the house. And you could just, it was just chaos, absolute chaos. People running, you know, you could see the gunfire, you could, I mean, the, the lighting from the gunfire because it was dark. Two people were injured and one male died in this resident's yard. Horrifying is what it was, horrifying. The person that, the, the person that died um, ran from where the shooting occurred and collapsed uh, behind one of the houses here on South Oakland. There was a previous shooting here at Seymour Park in late May, and all this gun violence has neighbors concerned. And this year you can't even, you can't even let the kids come outside. We're afraid to take him to the park. The neighbors are correct about the, the increase in the shootings, at least over here at Seymour Park. Residents and police say it's the late night crowds that hang out at Seymour Park Causing the uptick in violence. It's a problem with people gathering, and I mean, our officers are trying to do the best they can, but you can't be everywhere. Our community policing officers are, are in here. It, it's the people that come to the park that, that seem to be causing the problems. In Green Bay, Rhonda Fox, Local 5 News. Thank you, Rhonda. No arrests have been made, but authorities are trying to locate a person of interest. If you have any information, you're encouraged to contact Green Bay Police. Well, new this morning from the Fox City's Manasha apartment complex fire early yesterday morning left dozens of people without a home. The American Red Cross told Local 5 that disaster teams are working with people from more than 50 units in the Elizabeth Court Departments on 6th Street. Nina Manasha fire officials say crews responded to reports of a fire at the complex around 3 a.m. yesterday. The firefighters found heavy smoke coming from the basement of the building where they were able to contain the fire. Police say no one was hurt during the incident, though many apartments suffered smoke damage. The Red Cross is providing 38 rooms at nearby hotels, plus food delivery for residents who were displaced. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. 
Meanwhile, an unattended stove caused about $10,000 of fire damage to an Appleton home. Appleton fire officials say the blaze happened just before noon Saturday morning. They say a resident of the home on 8th Street says she had a pan of cooking grease on the stove and left the room, not realizing that the burner was turned on. Officials say the two people who lived in the home were not hurt, but they have been displaced. The Red Cross is providing assistance. Well, we turn now to your latest coronavirus numbers here in the state. Nearly 400 new cases of COVID-19 have been reported in Wisconsin with 14 new deaths. Statewide, there are now 24,539 positive cases with 744 related deaths. In our area, Brown County has 2,572 cases. Manitowoc County currently sits with 63 cases. Now, for more information on where you may live and your county specifically, you can simply find those numbers by going to our website at wearegreenbay.com. Well, the layoffs and furloughs related to the coronavirus pandemic have more people counting on food pantries. Feeding America of Northeast Wisconsin helps supply pantries across our part of the state. And they're seeing demand for food rise as the crisis continues. Feeding America's executive director explains that trend on this morning's Newsmaker Sunday. As soon as the, the, uh, the impact hit Northeast Wisconsin, we saw the demand on the food bank go up tremendously. So we've been operating in a, in a um, very urgent space for, for two months now. You can join us for more of that conversation on Newsmaker Sunday this morning at 7.30 following Local 5 Sunday morning. Well, in a positively Wisconsin story, a popular blood drive that honors veterans has been relocated this year. The Community Blood Center will be hosting the 32nd annual Appleton Mash Blood Drive Wednesday, June 24th at the Fox Cities Exhibition Center. Now, it's typically hosted in Houdini Plaza, but due to the coronavirus, they had to move locations to provide enough space for all the donors. Now, for every unit of blood, the Community Blood Center will make a donation to AMBETS Post 30 in Greenville. And the Green Bay Packers continue to provide COVID-19 relief to Wisconsin nonprofits. The Packers Foundation awarded a total of $500,000 to Brown and Milwaukee County organizations that assist people and families who've been affected by the pandemic. Well, coming up next in this morning's Ag Reports, learn how conservation is key to one successful dairy farm. And a little cloud cover to start this Father's Day, but our forecast looking much nicer into the afternoon. More details on that coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Local 5 News with Paul Evenson.